All right, you know, when I became an atheist, uh, but became an atheist activist, defending science against creationism on Usenet and elsewhere shortly before Y2K, America was 80% Christian, and only like 3% of Americans identified as atheists because nobody knew what an atheist was. This is due to a very successful propaganda campaign determined to keep our numbers low by misrepresenting who we are and what we're about. And my family and friends, the culture at large, and certainly the media too, being overwhelmingly religious, all wanted me to believe that atheism is somehow evil, as if we're all totalitarian communists, regardless what range our politics actually encompass. As if not believing in their God somehow means we both believe in and worship their devil. As if people have no innate humanity without the threat of an inescapable despot. And that says more about how immoral those believers are than it says about us. Because we can be good without God. But look what the believers do when they think that no one, not even God, is watching. I would remind all those self-righteous religious hypocrites that humanism is a secular morality offering practical solutions for real-world problems rather than the do-nothing response of thoughts and prayers. Thank you. We are good for goodness sakes because that's how society works and that's what works best for us. It doesn't do to piss off your community in the judgment of your peers. We all enjoy life a lot more when we show how we care about each other. It's as simple as that. And we don't need the threat of divine retribution and that threat obviously doesn't work anyway when those who believe in it most still commit the most unspeakable atrocities unimpeded by that belief. But every religion hates atheists, not because of any evil we might do, but because we're the only ones not playing the game of make-believe. We are not pretenders like the wanna believers are, and that's spoiling everybody else's fantasy. So this smear campaign against reason and critical thinking was pervasive around the world since at least the Bronze Age, when an unbeliever could be killed on the word of one or two witnesses. And now, some believers say that daring to doubt their doctrine somehow equivalent to terrorism. That's how afraid they are of having their fantasies dispelled. So most of my generation were misled to believe that atheism was the unreasonable position of claiming to know what cannot be logically proved. But that's what religion does. Those who believe on faith are the ones pretending to know what no one even can know, claiming certain knowledge of impossible absurdities, asserting unsupported and indefensible assumptions of blind speculation as if it were all a matter of demonstrable fact. This is why the 19th century journalist Ambrose Bierce defined faith as belief without evidence in what is told by one who speaks without knowledge about things without parallel. I was told that faith is a virtue and that skeptics were cynics, missing out on the the wonder and splendor, the big picture that only believers could appreciate, as if we couldn't experience awe or wonder. I dare say we have a more aesthetic appreciation of this world and of the rest of the cosmos than believers do. I didn't yet know about Hitchens' razor, that what is asserted without evidence may be dismissed without evidence, and that what is physically and logically impossible should not be considered equally probable, comparable with any rational hypothesis. Throughout my youth, I had been inculcated with propaganda saying that an atheist is someone who believes in nothing, rather than someone who does not actively try to convince themselves of things that are not evidently true, and consequently can only be assumed on faith. Instead, I was told that atheism was limited to and synonymous with nihilism, and that nihilism was the belief that life is meaningless, while in fact nihilism is the realization that whatever purpose your life may have is not imposed upon you by someone else, certainly not someone who doesn't even bother to exist, but that whatever meaning your life may have, if you decide that it should mean anything at all, can only be determined by whatever your behavior, actions, compassion, companionship, or support means to those affected by you. Because we all mean something to someone. And whatever that is comes down to your choice of how you will impact or influence the world around you. How is that a bad thing? That's certainly better than being a means to an end and someone else's plan, a tool to be used, the way that the vast majority of human lives must have been wasted if God were real. 
because God is supposed to have absolute control over absolutely everything, but he's also absolutely alone, if we're talking about the Abrahamic God, in which case we are pawns to be sacrificed unnecessarily because that God has to play both hero and villain, playing against himself on both sides of the chessboard. When I learned what an atheist is, I was embarrassed at the fact that I had already been an atheist for 15 years, but that I didn't know it. In the naivety of my youth, before I learned much about religion at all, I used to call myself an agnostic pagan for Christ. <laughs> my religion, to the extent that I had one, was more akin to Taoism, though I didn't know about Taoism or Confucianism, and instead the religion that I sincerely believed in and identified as was Jedi. When I finally realized that everything I used to believe about psionic abilities and supernatural life force wasn't really based on legitimate science like I was led to believe on books and TV, that was the day I learned I was atheist. I didn't come to that conclusion because I loved sin. If that were the case, I'd be like my Christian friends who get to sin all they want to and just be forgiven for whatever they do. Nor do I hate God. How do you hate someone who isn't even real? Although, to be honest, I have to admit that the wicked stepmother in Disney Cinderella was a real bitch. <laughs> Even if she wasn't real either. I certainly don't believe in atheism on faith. That's not even possible. It's just one more thing that the believers lie about. Projecting their own faults onto those who will not share them. Faith is auto-deceptive. Why would I want to make believe what is not evidently true? So for me, atheism was more a resignation than a resolve. Prior to the internet, we infidels were isolated and alone. We had no way to identify allies or connect with other like-minded individuals without first admitting that we were all these horrible things that society made us out to be. The A word has gotten so much negative press that I've known several people who said, just because I don't believe in God doesn't mean I'm an atheist. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what that really does mean. <laughs> But they would say, no, you're not an atheist unless you know there's no God. No. An atheist is anyone who is not convinced that an actual deity really exists. That's the proper way to phrase it. Not that atheists necessarily you know, have to be convinced that God does not exist, because that's the fallacy of reversing the burden of proof. And don't say you're agnostic, because you're either convinced or you're not. And if you suspend a judgment, that still means you don't believe. Being unconvinced could mean that those claiming there is a God have failed to meet their burden or make a compelling case, but it still applies even if you never heard of God. Because, of course, you wouldn't believe it then either. Of course, that. <laughs> you wouldn't believe in it then either. Atheism means anything or anyone or anything that lacks theism. Being a religious belief in a God. That means a rock can be atheist, the same way that a rock can also be amorphous, apolitical, asexual, asymmetrical, and abiotic. If we discover some long-secluded long tribe that never knew theism, they'd be atheists too. They don't have to first hear about, then subsequently consider, and then reject the empty assertions of religion in order to still not be a part of that. If they never had theism, they're atheist already. We are born atheists and we remain so until someone lies to us. Those who want to say otherwise are only playing into the hands of the propagandists who want to keep us at a minimal minority with no political influence. Defenders of the faith don't want anyone to know that ours really is the more reasonable and rational, peaceful and charitable position because religion is the most effective means of manipulating the masses. And it amasses such power from legions of emotionally motivated minions that can be ruined by just a small number of reasonable, logical, critical thinkers. Because we're not just going to sit there and soak up the nonsense, nodding like bobblehead toys. Religion wants thoughtless, unquestioning, credulous, obedient supporters, and that's why free thinkers are such a threat to their political power. That's why this country has experienced so many waves of religious revivals following our founding as the world's first secular nation. What followed was a reaction, not an awakening. Religion is an infectious addiction that affects the mind. Like a disease, it has its own defense mechanisms against all reason. It often demands power to subjugate workers, enslave women, and victimize children, and it depends on gullibility, so they don't want anyone who knows how to think. Thus, critical analytical skeptics became the most hated demographic in America, and certainly the least electable. 
for a time. But as we've now seen, it's not like that anymore. Here in the age of information, all of that propaganda is being disproved, along with most everything that the faithful claim is evidence of their position. Consequently, atheism is on the rise in all 50 states and around the world, while religion is in a general state of decline, largely because of their own criminal, hypocritical insanity and inhumanity. Where once, back around Y2K, only 3% of Americans were comfortable describing, them, describing themselves as re irreligious non-believers, I have seen that percentage rise, such that now a quarter of the population, even if they do, still don't call themselves atheists, even if they still don't know what that means, a quarter of the population says that religion is unimportant and they will have none of it. So... Still, even if they don't know what atheism means, that still means that one of four Americans in my generation and one-third of those under 30 do not trust in God. E pluribus unum, baby. <laughs> the religious right is aging, and their political influence is finally diminishing, thank God. <laughs> As our numbers rise, their percentage falls. There are more irreligious infidels in America now than there are Catholics. We are the fastest growing demographic and now the largest demographic with regard to religion since we have just overtaken even evangelicals who still own and control everything, especially in this state, but not for much longer. The one thing Christians got right is that these are their last days <laughs> to rule over the rest of us. The new generation has mostly abandoned their ancestral cultural delusion. Kids today are largely atheist and overwhelmingly secular, and so are their nominated representatives. This means we're seeing the last of the legislation for religious discrimination as secular centennials assume control of this building in the coming decade. In closing, I want to say that the dwindling factions of faith needn't worry about us taking over because no one offers a better defense of their constitutional freedom of religion than we, heretical, skeptical, secular, atheist activists. I told you.